All right, so another thing to think about when you think of state rights, um, think of the relationship that you have with your parents. In this case, states would be teenagers, federal government would be your parents. And it's just natural to have this struggle and tug of war for power, which could be illustrated or demonstrated within popular sovereignty. So that became also a major issue because the South started to scream, hey, if we want to keep slavery, we should due to popular sovereignty. And if we want to secede from the union, which is what they eventually did, they also thought it was within the realm of their power called state rights. Um, another concept that you'll hear in the near future is called federalism, which also deals with the relationship between state governments and the federal government. Let me not go too deep. Let's move on and let's talk about the economics of slavery. So slavery is still a major issue, but we're not discussing whether or not slavery is right or wrong. We're discussing the bread and butter of slavery. So the South is working very hard to preserve slavery because this is how they make their money. On the other hand, the North don't really care about slavery because financially, that is not how they maintain their lifestyle. So it brings forth another concept in this discussion called sectionalism. How do I get kids to understand sectionalism? Think of it in terms of an individual being loyal to their hood, all right? So yes, you could all be from South Florida, but when you look at the dynamics of South Florida, people don't normally say, hey, I'm from South Florida. They would probably tell you they're from Miami Gardens, or they're from Miramar, or they're from Overtown. Everyone is pledging allegiance to their hood, their neighborhood. And as a result of sectionalism, it created this distinct division among various regions of the United States of America. So of course, if you're a Southerner, you feel as if your livelihood is under attack. At this point, you're viewing the North as a threat to how you are able to provide for your family. So you're gonna to continue to support something that morally is wrong. Speaking of morals, let's jump right into the morality of slavery. In addition to us looking at it from a political and economic perspective, we're now starting to examine or evaluate the entire institution itself. Some examples of us looking at slavery in a very sketchy, funny way would be a book titled Uncle Tom's Cabin. Uncle Tom's Cabin was a national bestseller that was read by millions at the time. And in most cases, if you read the book, your entire perspective, your mindset changed. And regardless of it being viewed from a political and economic perspective, you started to question the institution in itself. You started to question, hey, is it really okay to take a group of people and keep them in bondage? It's probably not okay. So that's one aspect of looking at the cause of war from a social perspective. In addition, there were a number of slave revolts. One infamous slave revolt was led by an abolitionist that goes by the name of John Brown. I always try to point this out to students. He was white, okay? He was a white man who also wanted to see African Americans be free. Unfortunately, his revolt was unsuccessful, and they killed him. Another situation happened, or I would probably say event, was a historic landmark Supreme Court case titled Dred Scott versus Sanford. Why does this court case play a role? Well, it played a huge role because Dred Scott, who is a slave, decided to file a lawsuit to the United States Supreme Court requesting, demanding his freedom on the basis of the fact that he was living in a free state. So if I'm living in a free state, and technically I'm what? I'm free. Uh -uh. The United States Supreme Court said, hell no, you're not free. In fact, you have no rights and your property. So the outcome of that court case really 
set this crusade to end slavery back. Um, so all of these causes, whether it's political, economic, or social, played a huge role in causing the Civil War. So the last cause that I want to discuss, Abraham Lincoln, supposedly the great emancipator. I'll talk about that. But Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, and at the time, Republicans were in support of the abolishment of slavery. Was he in support of the abolishment of slavery? I don't know. Historians will tell you yes. Others may say no. But there is a thing called being guilty by association. So if he's representing the Republican Party and their platform is in support of abolishing slavery, you're going to automatically make that assumption. So Southern states were already preparing themselves to secede from the Union just in case Abraham Lincoln gets elected. Lo and behold, he gets elected, southern states start to secede. What does it mean to secede? To leave, I'm out. Um, there's actually like a, a meme going on, right? SpongeBob, I, I and I'm a head out, okay. So that's basically what happened. The first state to secede from the Union, South Carolina, and the other states follow suit. So, was that the immediate cause of the Civil War? Yes. The immediate cause of the Civil War was the election of Abraham Lincoln due to the fact that Southern states started to secede. So why did the North, AKA Abraham Lincoln, launch a war against the South? Was it for slavery? Even though a lot of the conflicts surrounded slavery? No. The only reason why Abraham Lincoln and the federal government launched a war against the South was to preserve the Union. We have a country that is now divided into two, and the goal is to bring it back to one. Make sense? So yes, slavery played a huge role, but it was not the camel that broke. It was not the straw that broke the camel's back. Okay, I'll fix that one. It was actually the secession of the Southern states and Abraham Lincoln's goal was to preserve the union. Now, we can go on to say that his mind changed later on down the line, that's another video, but I need students to understand that the immediate cause of the Civil War was the election of Abraham Lincoln, secession of the Southern states, and Abraham Lincoln's goal to preserve the union. I hope this video helped. I hope it makes a lot of sense in terms of what caused this war from a political, economic, and social perspective. Okay.